Hi everyone, this is Vu. As you may know, I started my first company when I was just 19 years old. I got into Y Combinator, it was venture funded, and I dropped out of college. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about tips for 2020. If you're looking to start a company in college, things you should do and things you definitely shouldn't do. One of the most important things when trying to figure out what startup to create is something called competitive advantage, right? So competitive advantage is really um, a fancy way of saying, how are you going to be able to beat your competitors? What is your secret sauce, essentially, right? You know, maybe McDonald's has the Big Mac sauce. I don't know, maybe that's their competitive advantage. It's probably not, but you know, in, in a market that is so competitive and when you're trying to find investment um, money and you're trying to grow and trying to win over customers, the same things keeps on coming up. They're gonna ask you like, what do you know that other people don't? So that's the first thing you should think about uh, when you're in college because you actually have a lot of competitive advantage that you might not realize, right? So, you know, for example, uh, one of the strongest historically competitive advantages is something called network effects, right? So if you look at something like Facebook, right? Facebook was founded, I believe, I think in 2005 in Harvard by Mark Zuckerberg, right? His competitive advantage was he had a lot of influential people in a very tight uh, space in Harvard. Um, people that were, you know, early adopters and people that kind of thought about technology. So when he released Facebook in there, if he's able to demonstrate that this is something that can be sticky, if this is something that can be used uh, by a small number of, of, of people, it's very easy then to take that to investors in the future and show them like, hey, this is something that we can replicate. Uh, we just start this at Harvard, then we can do this at Yale, then we can do this at Stanford, etc. And then the, the story about how to grow uh, kind of plays out by itself, right? So Mark's competitive advantage was that he was in this network that is Harvard. You should sort of try to think about it uh, in that way as well. Um, there are other companies out there that also use network effects uh, to their competitive advantage, such as uh, Yik Yak, right? I don't know if you remember Yik Yak, but it's kind of dead now. But I think after a year of launching or so, they were worth something like $300 million just because of how fast they were able to accelerate, right? The thing that people like about college students and early adopters is, you know, we look at college students and young people as you know, tomorrow's future users. If you can win over the college users in four to six years, they're going to be 22, 26, 28 years old, right? Um, they're going to be the, the generation that go, is going to spend the most amount of money. So if you can capture that user base and make them stick to your product, that is a very compelling story to tell investors. When you're talking about competitive advantage, the opposite can be true, right? You can really shoot yourself in the foot if you don't use that to your advantage. So for example, if you are a college student and you came to me and you're telling me you're trying to make a social network for old people, my first question is, why the heck are you doing this? What do you know about old people, right? If you're building something not for yourself, not for your population, um, then I, I wouldn't really look there because the question is, why would you as a college student uh, know about the space more than somebody could, right? Really look towards your colleagues, look towards your fellow students and try to figure out the problems that they have that you can solve and those will be the most valuable uh, things that can be worth a billion dollars in the future. For example, a good company that did this in the past is a company called DoorDash. Um, they uh, were founded in uh, Stanford, actually, and I think the problem that they realized is that, you know, a lot of their, their fellow students, they wanted to deliver food to their dorms, to their apartments, and it was like kind of far away, and not a lot of these restaurants had delivery outside of like the basic Chinese, the basic uh, pizza delivery shops, right? So these students created this platform called DoorDash, which um, you know, once you ordered it, you'd get dashers or people that went to these restaurants for you and deliver it to you. It seems like a very basic concept, but people at Stanford really loved this and they really relied on this. And then they were able to expand past Stanford and into, um, you know, Palo Alto and Mountain View, uh, those areas around there. Another example of building what your fellow students need is Dropbox, right? So the founder, Drew Houston, was a student. I can't remember where. Um, but the story goes that he and his fellow students, they were really annoyed with losing USB uh, little, uh, you know, those plug-in USB storage devices, and they were really sick of 
emailing each other uh, different versions of their essays and whatnot in their project. So what Drew uh, ended up doing was just creating a simple server where you can upload things and it sync on a bunch of devices. And thus, that's how Dropbox was born, right? Another framework in order to think about startup problems is just to build things that would waste a lot of time for your fellow students, that would entertain them. A good example of this is startups like Reddit. Um, that was created by Steve Huffman and Alexis Ohanian when they were still in college. Uh, Reddit was supposed to be like, you know, I read it. You know, it was supposed to be the quote front page of the internet. And it was sort of like a tool for people to digest and read, um, you know, the, the news on the internet. The last place I would look for startup ideas is something within your research itself, right? So if you are a master's student in computer science or a PhD, um, it doesn't have to be computer science. It can be something like electrical engineering or uh, I don't know, something that is, um, you know, potentially uh, very new technology, right? So where you're at the, the, the bleeding edge of some technology. Uh, there's a lot of um, startups that have sprung up uh, from, you know, these graduate students themselves applying this technology uh, into the public sector. One of the best examples of this is Google. So uh, Larry Page and Sergey, uh, they were graduate students, I think at Stanford, uh, someone can correct me on this, but um, they were doing uh, a research paper on kind of like search and stuff like that. And that's where kind of Google was kind of born. So, you know, nowadays uh, in 2020s, really popular fields of study could be like machine learning, AI, big data, um, quantum computing, the, that kind of stuff, or maybe even you know, biomedical uh, neural interfaces, right? So if you're in those sorts of field and you know something that uh, the rest of the population might not know, that could be a very good uh, potential um, gold mine for you uh, in order to extract a lot of value because that is your competitive advantage. So it'd be a good place to look. When it comes down to it, the startups that I made eight years ago or 10 years ago, or whoever made uh, 15 years ago, like the Mark Zuckerbergs out there, are not going to be the same startups that are going to be successful in 2020 and beyond. The market changes. A lot of these ideas have already been taken, but the framework in which you can find new startups remain, I believe, relatively unchanged. You should really think about your competitive advantage. You should think about your network. You should think about your fellow students and their problems. And you should think about the research that you uh, know deeply um, and see if there's something in there that you can make into a potential startup. That is really, I believe, the best way uh, for you to find future success. Do not try to copy uh, what has already been done before, uh, but look ahead and try to pave the path forward. Um, that's my advice to you. Um, if you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to hear more advice, you know, make sure to subscribe and uh, leave a comment below if you have any questions. Thank you.